YOLO rules here, and welcome back to Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. So in the last episode, we were asked to come to the gym by Monokuma for some reason, and we just saw a hero, and he was very nervous around us for some reason. So let's go into the gym and see what Monokuma wants. Can't be good anytime we've had to meet in the gym, something awful always happens. Ah, oh, they changed this cutscene so that only Makoto is in it. Still the same cutscene, though. Regardless of that fact. Monokuma, what's up? Monokuma! Hello! Welcome! Welcome, hello! Are you ready for your final hint? Oh, that's right, he wanted to give us a final hint. Well, it just so happens to be in the envelope on the ground in front of you. Envelope on the ground? The envelope? Oh. Why can't you just hand it to me? Okay, weird. This must be the envelope. <laughs> and, just so you know, I won't be answering any questions about what you find inside. What? <laughs> Don't worry, just get on with it! Okay. Monokuma's cryptic words didn't make me feel any better, but I picked up the envelope. And opened it. Yes, I realized I said envelope and envelope. I switched between saying the two. What I found was a single photograph. Photograph. Class picture. It, fe it featured a bunch of faces I recognize extremely well. Yeah. Oh yeah, even Mukuro's in this photo. There's everyone who'd come to Hote's Peak at the same time as me. But, wait, but... There's someone behind Sayaka. Yeah, I already saw. She's the one. I, she's the only one I don't recognize. It's obviously. <sighs> really? Wait, that's not true. I do recognize her. That's right. When Byakuya and I were in the headmaster's room, when we looked, when we looked at that file, Mukuro Ikasaba. Then this girl is. Yes, it's Mukuro. What? Why? Why is Mukuro here with everyone else? Are we seriously asking this question right now? And even more than that, just having everyone here pose like this is weird enough by itself. And we're all wearing matching uniforms. I don't remember anything like this. Well, everybody except for uh, Celeste who's in her typical wear. And now that I'm looking at it, it's not even everyone. Wait, it's not? I'm not in the picture. Oh yeah, we aren't. Oh, that's weird. I'm the only one not there. The picture has all 15 other students, but not me. Hmm, but I guess that makes sense. Does it? After all, I don't remember ever taking a picture like this. Yeah. I went to junior high with Sayaka, but the first time I met everyone else was when I arrived here at Holt's Peak Academy. So it's natural for me to not be in this picture, but what's definitely unnatural he said everyone else is in the picture. I thought everyone was like me and didn't know each other till they got here. But if this picture is real, then could that mean? Could it be? Everyone else and just me? Everyone here except me is... <laughs> How long are you gonna keep up this rambling soliloquy of yours, Hamlet? What are you gonna You're do? You're kinda getting in the way, standing there, you know. Hmm. So, I mean, get out. But, I told you, I'm not fielding any questions. I'm what kind of mystery would this be if I gave you all the answers? That'd be totally out of left field. Uh, he malfunctioned again. Uh, I guess that means he's done talking. <laughs> Darn it. Hmm, group photo has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Okay, so that's weird. So in the end, all I found in the gym was even more confusion. But, hmm, did Hiro get something like that or similar? Because he was scared of us for some reason. And with that confusion in hand, I left the gym dejected. Hmm, something weird's going on here. Like as if there hasn't been something weird going on. How does that count as a hint? It just made me even more confused. Is that what Monokuma was going for? Did he put together a fake photo just to confuse me? I don't know. 
But it looks so real, so full of life. How could anyone fake that? I mean, Photoshop done well is an amazing thing. Which would mean everyone but me. Maybe I should just ask everyone directly. That would be nice, yeah. That should clear all this up. No, I have to clear all this up. Okay, so let's access the map and teleport to, I'm guessing that we need to go to the, uh, uh, there are extra floors and stuff for now, um, because it said Jim's second floor, didn't it? It's a little bit weird. But anyway, we need to go back to the spare hotel and meet up with everyone else, because I assume that's where everyone is. Makes sense. Plus, I'm, I'm sure I saw an exclamation point marker on the map when I was over, over here. Yeah, for the dining hall. Okay. So let's see if we can get to, the, get to the bottom of this photo thing. Oh, hey, Hina. So, this is where you've been hiding. Listen, I was hoping to talk to you. Oh, is everybody scattered around and I have to go find them? Oh, God. Oh, Makoto? Mm, she's scared of us, too. Sorry, gotta go! What? She ran off so fast, I didn't even have time to ask her to stop. Hina. Why? Why won't you talk to me? Okay, let's go see if we can find anybody else, I guess. Though I get the feeling they're all going to have that reaction. Let's see, where to next? Okay, there's nobody in their dorm room, so let's go to a different floor and search for exclamation points. Ah, somebody on the second floor. Somebody, oh, of course, Byakuya and Toko probably are in the library. Assuming that's where the marker was. No, that's not where the marker was? I just assumed, okay. No, it's actually, oh, in the archive, okay. So, I'm not entirely wrong. Of course, he would lock himself in the archive. Well, not really, but. Oh. Hey, Byakuya. Oh, Byakuya. Hmm. Uh, listen, do you think we could talk? Uh, he doesn't seem to want to talk. Byakuya? That's enough. I have nothing to talk to you about. <laughs> Don't talk to me as if we're friends. Hey, Byakuya, wait! But of course he didn't. He just walked away. What the? Why was he acting like that? I mean, he usually acts like that, but that was more hostile than usual. Like he was purposely trying to avoid me? Hmm. Okay. Wrong button. Whoopsies. It's the R button. I keep pressing the escape button expecting it to back me out of the room, but nope, that's not how this works. Okay, let's teleport to someplace else. Okay, so... Let's see... More exclamation marks. Nope, nothing here. Nothing here either. Oh! There's someone at the garden. Probably Hero, because that was his favorite spot to hang out. Oh yeah, I just now noticed we're finding them in all of their comfort zone spots. I remember this was a favorite spot for Hero. Of course, the dining room would be a favorite spot for Hina. Hey, Hero. <laughs> Makoto! What's going on with you? Every time I see you, you freak out like that. You mean every time? This is the only time we found him. Uh, um... No, I... Uh, no! Sorry, but I'm in a big hurry! Uh, once again, he ran off like a terrified rabbit. Hero, what's wrong? I still wasn't able to talk to him about the notebook I'd found. What is this still? Did I miss something? It's like he was avoiding me. Like he was afraid of me. Why? I guess because of the Let's Play, I haven't been going through all of the in-game dialogue, so maybe I missed something? A previous interaction that could have been done? Because the dialogue for this is acting like as if I should have talked to them before this point. Huh. There's someone in the bio lab. I'm guessing Kyoko would be in here. If I had to take a guess. Or... Oh. I decided to visit the bio lab one more time. Oh, we have story relevant stuff going on now? And the first thing I saw when I got there... Oh! was her passed out again. Toko is here. Huh? Toko? 
Wait. Why is one of the body things open? It's open! Oh, but Toko. Oh, we have to check on Toko first. Or Genocide Jack, I guess, at this point. Toko, are you okay? No, no. She's not dead, is she? No, nope, there it goes. Hi, Genocide Joe. It's cold. It's super cold. So cold, I think I might catch cold. If you keep taking naps in places like this, I'm sure you will. I'm, I don't think she fell asleep in here intentionally. I see! What? I was asleep? Oh, I must have fainted again. Uh -huh. I bet you were standing there staring at me, getting all excited, weren't you? Please, no. No, I wasn't. Mm -hmm. Oh, then what? Hot and bothered? Thing? Straight up horny? Good god. Um, okay, so why did you pass out? <laughs> I don't know. Last thing I remember was me waking up just now. What did you do to Miss Morose? Uh, I did absolutely nothing. Oh, that's right. Your memory stops and starts each time you switch. <laughs> uh, bingo, but sing uh, We share some basic knowledge, but our memories are very much separate. I forget what voice I did for Genocide Jill. Jill, SOB! And don't say it like it's a bad thing. It's a blessing as far as I'm concerned. Because <laughs> even if she forgets something, I totally remember. Yes! So it's like double the memory. Not, not really. Uh, no, it's more like half. Yeah, exactly. Oh, hey, we got a truth bullet. Huh? But all I want to know right now is where's my little darling? Tell me now or I slit your throat. Uh, I don't know. I'm sure Byakuya is around somewhere doing his own investigating. We just talked to him. He's in the archive. Mm, yes, yes. By himself? I assume so. <laughs> I I'm knew it. Fire. I totally knew it. I'm a total pro when it comes to all things master. <laughs> anyway, I gotta hurry. I can't even imagine how lonely he must be right now. <laughs> See ya, Genocide Joe. <laughs> Toko shot off, her eerie laughter echoing behind her. Uh, I totally forgot to ask her about the picture. Well, there's no point in asking Genocide Jack, anyway. Besides, I have more important things to do right now. Why did Toko faint? There's gotta be some reason for it. I love this music that's playing during this segment. Hmm, the fridge is open. But I'm sure they were all shut tight last time I was here. That must be why she passed out. Oh, hey, yeah. Kyoko is in here. Hi. She faints so easily. Hey, Kyoko? Makoto. Were you just standing in the corner the whole time? It's getting late, isn't it? Are you okay? Indeed. I'm sorry if I made you worry. No, you don't have to apologize. Listen. But listen, about this room. Uh, yeah, it's... It would seem... It's a morgue. Yeah, we figured that out already. Yeah. I knew it. I suspected as much. And Toka must have looked inside the fridge, seen what was in there, and, well, there you have it. Why would she look inside of it, though? You knew she'd fainted? Indeed. I was on my way here when Genocide Jack came running past me. Oh, you came in afterwards. Okay. You weren't just creepily standing in the corner. I assumed she must have sneezed, but once I got inside, the real reason became clear. So why are you in here? It would seem... I imagine she came here to investigate, and when she opened the slot there... That's when she saw the body inside and dropped like a bag of rocks. Now, why is everything gotta be so difficult with her? Hey, it's not her fault. Anyway... Anyway, we should close it up. Don't want to leave it hanging open like that. Yeah, good idea. Makoto. Give me a hand with this. Kyoka approached the fridge, hands outstretched. But suddenly, she stopped. Hmm? What's wrong? Listen. Maybe we should wait a second before closing it. You've spotted something? Huh? How come? Because Mukuro's body is in here. Oh. <laughs> Mukuro's corpse? Mukuro's body is inside the fridge. I see. Just like every other time. The mastermind probably brought it up here while we were at the class trial. The mastermind did it. Because they assumed we wouldn't be doing the class trial over again, I guess. Yeah, makes sense. Also, Monokuma just has to sit there and watch. So, they can probably do whatever they want during the class trial as long as we don't address Monokuma directly. So... You may be right. Either way, now I can finally get a good look at the body. Oh, that's right, Kyoko didn't get a chance to check the body during the last investigation. She did, but for like only a minute or two. Makoto. Not enough to do a thorough examination. I need to do my own examination of the corpse as soon as possible. 
I'm going to find a clue this time, and I'm going to grab the mastermind by the tail. Okay, so what should I do? So then. Why don't you just wait over there? I'll let you know as soon as I'm finished. Just wait over there, that's it? Okay. So, do I just have to talk to her again, or do I have to exit the room, or what? Hmm, I should ask Hyoko about that group photo. After all, she's in it too. True. Don't let me interrupt your investigation, but I wanted to talk to you about something. What is it? It's about that announcement Monokuma made earlier. Whew. You mean the one about a hint or something? I didn't take him up on the offer. Oh, so you haven't seen it? Huh? Why not? Because... The only reason he'd give us a hint at this point would be to confuse us, to cloud our judgment. I can solve this mystery on my own, without whatever hint he may have to offer. That's a good point. I wish I could go back and do the same thing, but what's done is done, I guess. Standing here looking at her. I don't think she's hiding anything from me. Is she right? Did the mastermind forge that picture as a trap to confuse us? That's gotta be it. There's no other explanation. I can't lead things... Okay. I guess we have to look at the body then. It's a fridge meant for storing dead bodies. I can't do it. I can't look inside. Wow, you wimp. Does this just play the same thing that I just... Yeah, it's the same dialogue. <laughs> Skip, 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 skip. So, what exactly am I looking for? I've already looked through this instruction manual. More importantly... You know, I think I've seen a tarp like this somewhere before. Wait, we haven't connected this dot yet? Oh, it's the same one I found in the garden tool shed. For some reason I thought we already had this. And if I remember, that tarp had a stamp that said Biolab. And that's the tarp that was used to help camouflage the murder in the garden. At some point, someone got it from the Biolab and took it over there. Oh, right, there was no tarp in here before, because when the person brought it back, they just folded it up and put it in the corner. Stupid. Anyway, can I, I talk... Can I leave now? No? What, do I need to talk to Kyoko now? Nope. It's wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Whew. Because... Okay, I'm gonna switch off from auto because I, I don't want to accidentally skip dialogue. What? On the left hand side of the refrigerator, a bunch of blue lights are on. But these ones aren't. It would seem... Oh. Was... Oh, I had to look at that. Okay. It would seem the blue light comes on when the slot is occupied. So when someone's in there, the blue light comes on. Looking around, the number of lights that are on, including Mukuro's, there's nine in all. Nine. Nine lights? Is there something odd about that number? Because... Hmm. I'm actually trying to think. Is there something wrong with that number? Whew. Okay, Makoto. I'm done. Already? Jeez, that was fast. Indeed. Anyone can do good work if they go slow. In that spirit, I'll make my report brief. <laughs> so, did you find anything? Indeed. I paid careful attention to the wounds and the traces of blood. It seems highly likely that the stomach wound and blow to the back of the head were inflicted after death. Really? The burnt tissue made things a little difficult, but I'm completely confident in my findings. Well, you haven't been wrong before. So that means neither of those were the fatal injury, right? Then what was the fatal injury? Due to the explosion, the, vic the victim's identity is unknown. They were, however, dead before the blast. The victim had been stabbed a single time with a knife which went completely through the body. They'd also been struck in the head with an object about as thick as a metal pipe. 
The body was covered with other wounds, but these were at least several days old. The only other option is those other wounds, but the file said they were old. Is that right? Where does it say they're old? Huh? Because... All the Monokuma file says is that they were inflicted at least several days ago. I guess I don't see the difference. Wrong. Well, the difference is immense, considering the impression they give. Listen. You seem to be equating several days old with simply old. However... But that doesn't quite follow logically. Old wounds makes it sound like they've been there forever, like they're not related to the murder. Are you saying they are? But all we got the Monokum uh, but we all got the Monokumo file right after she was killed, right? Actually did Kyoko receive one? Because she wasn't here for that. So if the wounds were at least a few days old, there's no way they could have had anything to do with it. So then. But what if Mukuro herself wasn't killed within the last few days? What? At the very Certainly, least. you can allow it as one of the many possibilities, can't you? One of many? Right. A detective doesn't have supernatural powers. There's no way to predict the answer from the beginning. Instead, the ideal detective begins by imagining as many possible scenarios as they can. In other words... They envision these possibilities without prejudice, without bias, using only their logic and common sense. Then, as they investigate, they test what they find e against each of these possibilities. <laughs> of course, me telling you this doesn't mean you'll be any good at detective work. But beyond using that to solve this particular mystery, you should keep it in mind for the future. Okay, Kyoko's account. Got it. Hey. So, if there's anything else you'd like to know about the condition of the body, now's the time. Come to think of it, there was one thing. Earlier, when I was looking at Mukuro's profile, it listed her height and weight. So... 5 foot 7 inches, 97 pounds. Vitals were 31, 22, 32. Did I get all that right? You remembered all that? They are indeed consistent with the corpse. So then... Indeed. And don't forget about the Finrear tattoo. There's absolutely no mistake. Indeed. Our victim in this case is without a doubt Mukuro Ikusaba. Mukuro's profile has been updated. And? Is that all you wanted to ask? Yeah, I think so. So then... then it looks like we have no further business with Mukuro's body. Let's get going. It's kind of chilly in here. Oh, wait, are we not going to put the body back? Don't you think it's kind of sad leaving it out like this? Why? Sad? Did you forget she was our enemy once? A part of the ultimate despair. But she still got killed. She's still a victim. Uh, Makoto with your soft heart. Hey. Have you heard the phrase, you reap, you reap what you sow? Well, yeah, but still. <sighs> you really are naive. You know that? It, it's really quite appalling. <laughs> but she could have abandoned me, but she decided to help me instead. <laughs> that comment, wow. So for someone like that, what does it mean to be naive? So then... I think we've done all we can do here. Back to our separate investigations, yes? Ah, hold on. Still have one more thing to do. Something I need to talk to Kyoko about. What? Oh, right, the pocketbook. I need to ask her about the pocketbook I found in that locker. Hmm. If I don't do it now... Well, let's hurry up and do it then. Why, why do we have to reinitiate the conversation? Hey, Kyoko. I did have one last thing. I know I shouldn't, but I feel like I have to ask. What? Go ahead then. Out with it. Have you really not seen your dad even once since you got here? What? What? So... What do you mean? Well, you know all those lockers on the second floor of the dorms? Indeed. I do, yes. But to get into any of the lockers, you need the handbook of whoever the locker belongs to. Actually, I managed to get them open using that emergency handbook. I see. The one you found in the headmaster's hidden room. And? So, did you find anything worthwhile in the lockers? I found a pocketbook, and after looking through it, I think it must be your pocketbook. Why is that? What makes you say that? Because... Like I said, only the locker's owner should be able to get into it, right? I can't imagine those lockers belong to any of us. After all, we only got access to that area just recently. 
What I'm saying is, there's no way I could have had access to any of those lockers. And if I did have a pocketbook, why would I bother putting it in a locker? Everything you just said makes perfect sense, but there was something written inside. It was about the headmaster, about your father. What? If that's true... Could that mean that video is real too? Oh, the video all the way from the back of the beginning of the game? Video? Makoto. Makoto. I think everything is finally starting to fit together to reveal a cohesive picture. Although, I'm afraid that picture might be worse than anything we could have imagined. Oh. Uh, what are you talking about? I... I need to go investigate the those lockers right now. I need to confirm what you just said with my own two eyes. Oh right, because if the locker truly is hers, she should be able to get into it using her own handbook. Oh, let me give you the Handmaster's handbook. That way you can... So... That won't be necessary. If I'm right about this, I shouldn't have any problem opening the locker with my own handbook. After all, it would seem that it's my locker. Your locker? Makoto. If you watch this, it'll all make sense. Class 78, Urgent Interviews. A DVD. And it says- okay. It says class- I just read that. So... I found it in that hidden room, after you left. Anyway... I don't have time to explain exactly what I think it means, so just watch it and see for yourself. I think you'll realize exactly what it means. You'll understand why you found my pocketbook in a place none of us have ever seen before. None of this makes sense right now. But I guess that means there's some important clue on this DVD. Okay, let's go watch this DVD in the AV room. Makoto. Oh, and now it's my turn. Your turn? Do you have a second to listen to me ramble? Ramble? In other words... So, as it turns out, the arrangements I'd made didn't stick. Arrangements? What I mean is, I'm less and less sure of everything, even my own feelings. What is she talking about? You're talking about your dad, right? Oh, right, she was arranging to meet with him to cut him off, but she's not sure if that's such a good idea anymore. Or, well, not that she can do it anymore in the first place. I can never find the answers to the questions I wanted to ask for the rest of my life. And all because of the mastermind. Ah, that's Kyoko's despair, never being able to fulfill her purpose for coming to the school and blowing her cover. However... But there's one thing I am sure of. When it comes to the mastermind, there's no room in my heart for forgiveness. I... I swore to destroy the mastermind. This is just one more reason to follow through on that. Kyoko's eyes burned with the fire of determination. The determination to defeat the mastermind. <laughs> it's strange to be confronted with his death and suddenly feel this way. I couldn't care less if my father had found happiness. Why? So why is it... Why does it bother me so much to know how he suffered? It's ridiculous. There's just no understanding it, I guess. Ah, uh, she cares. She let out a small laugh as she said it. But her smile was filled with sorrow. Whew. So, that's it for my rambling. There's still much to do before I can consider my task complete. Ah, uh, you're right. Hey. But keep this in mind. There is only ever one absolute truth. Whether that truth serves justice or suffering. Whether it's the greatest truth or the worst. What do you mean? Makoto. Even if the truth you uncover is filled with hopelessness, you still can't give up hope. Absolutely not, because, because all I can do is keep moving forward. That's pretty much all I'm good at, you know? <laughs> Indeed. Sorry if that was strange. So then... Anyway, I need to get going. I'll see you at the class trial. Okay. Leaving behind that final farewell, Kyoko was gone. I'd better get going myself. I got that DVD from Kyoko. I should head to the AV room to check it out. Kyoko said something about hopeless truth. But no matter what happens, I won't lose hope. Even if it's the worst truth in the world, I can't afford to lose. I love our determination and spirit. Okay, so let's go to the AV room, which is down on the first floor, if I'm not mistaken. Um, 
is a dormitory, this is not. Um, and I need this spot in particular. Because it's closest to the AV room. Which is right over here, I think. Yep, right here. I always get disoriented from teleporting because it always puts me facing differently than I think it's going to actually put me. Anyway, let's watch the DVD. Hmm, this should be able to play DVDs just fine. Well, yes, it can. We watched DVDs on them earlier. Let's go. Well then, I'd better take a look. I took the DVD Kyoko gave me and put it in the player. Hmm. I said that it was playing, but nothing appeared on screen. I stared into the black of the monitor. It must have only been a few seconds, but to me it felt like an eternity. And then, all of a sudden, an image appeared. Oh, Sayaka. Sayaka? It took me by total surprise. I hadn't seen Sayaka in who knows how long. There she was. Okay then, are you ready to begin? The voice I heard was of the man positioned on one side of the screen. His voice of a middle-aged man. I do apologize, but I hope you don't mind if I record our conversation. Hmm. I'm a little slow, you know. A little slow? I never really got the hang of taking notes while having a conversation. Ah. Sounded like he was trying to make a joke, but Saika's tense face didn't move a single millimeter. Wow. So this video is meant to serve as a kind of contract substitute. Okay. It's not that I don't trust you guys. It's more like... Insurance, so please don't worry too much. Ah, uh, just to verify whatever it is that you're recording them for? Saika makes no response. Now then, let me get straight to the point. Has everybody been brainwashed or something? There please. is a chance that you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. Oh. Can you accept that? Uh, um, y you want me to accept that? Saika was obviously at a total loss. It made total sense. Who would agree to spending the rest of your life in this school? I... I... accept. What? Thank you. And I'm sorry about all this. Hmm. Well, I can promise you that I will do everything in my power to keep you safe. Well, you failed pretty hard at that. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, I give you my word. As if on cue, that's where the video cut out. There was a lot I hadn't understood up till now. But this, only this, I simply couldn't comprehend what I'd heard. Because I know how much Saika wanted to get out of here. I know how much she wanted to escape and pursue her dreams with her friends again. She wanted that so bad, she tried to frame me for murder. So why, why would she say yes to living the rest of her life here? As I sat there thinking about it, I noticed the sudden light on the monitor the video that I thought was finished flashed back on screen. My eyes started back to the screen. Hmm. And if I was confused before, what I saw next pushed me right over the edge. What? Oh, it's us! Huh? What I saw was me. Impossibly, undeniably me. So, Makoto. Before we begin, I should let you know that I'll be recording our conversation. Okay, so at least he hasn't scripted his lines. Yes. He's just going along with it. Okay, wow, we sound dead. <laughs> we sound dead inside. What in the world happened? Me and the headmaster were looking at each other. He and I were having what seemed like a fairly normal conversation, but I, the I in the here and now, had absolutely no memory of it. I had no memory of even meeting the headmaster, much less sitting down to talk to him like this. Now, shall we get straight to the point? Makoto, there's a chance you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. Can you accept that? Yes. Wow, no hesitation. This can't be real. I said yes? I'm sorry I'm putting you through all this. Hmm. Well, I mean, we don't have much of a choice, do we? don't have much of a choice. But I promise that as long as you're in this school, I will do everything I can to protect you. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, that's the very least I can do for you. Hmm. Wow. Once again, the video cut out. 
from there, the video repeated the same scene again and again with the others. Byakuya. Toko. Hina. Everyone. They all said that they agreed to live in this school forever. Hmm. Remember that fever dream we had when we were sick that we that we're not supposed to leave? Um, I guess it's related to this. It's weird. And then Yep, Kyoko. That's what she meant by was that video real. Her interview with him had been recorded just as clearly. Without a doubt she had met him. She sat down with the headmaster of Hotes Peak Academy, her father. And when he asked her his question, she answered the same as everyone else. She accepted a life within the school. Just as Kiyoko's interview was wrapping up... Huh? The monitor suddenly went black. Huh? It wasn't just the monitor, the DVD player itself had apparently turned off. Which of course meant that the DVD wasn't playing anymore. What the heck just happened? Oh, hello! Oopsie! Looked like it broke! Out of service! You did that on purpose. What? So it just so happened to break just now? Too bad! Now then, win doesn't matter. Failure can strike anywhere, anytime. <laughs> That's what failure is, right? Mm. Failure my butt. You cut the power on purpose. Well, whatever. Even if I wa even if I watched the whole thing, it'd just be more of the same. He'd ask them the question, and they'd all say yes. I couldn't help myself, I let out a huge, exasperated sigh, but as I did, I remembered something. That's right. I fainted too, and when I woke up, I noticed a strange feeling of separation within myself, a disconnect. It would seem... Thinking back on it now, at that point my memory was gone. At that time, I'd forgotten. I couldn't remember why I'd come to this school, and I couldn't remember what my ultimate ability was. But what would make you forget all that? Hey. Strange, isn't it? It's hard to imagine it happened by chance. It seems much too convenient. Hmm. A convenient outcome. Something that seemed to obviously work in favor of the mastermind. So does that mean I've lost my memory too? It seems like we all have. What about the others? Have we all forgotten? Or... I guess that photo Monokuma gave to us still messing with our head. Oh! That's the announcement for the class trial to start the final one. For anything that has a start, there has to be an end. Yep. And if the end comes, then that means it's time for a fresh start. Sure, there whatever you say. There is no night that doesn't have a dawn. Yes, you get it. You're poetic. Let's get let's get on with this, please. Although that dawn is totally pitch black, there is no storm that won't eventually end. Of course, then that leads to drought. But as I said, every end is the promise of a new beginning. Which is why I'm sure we'll get to meet again. Because the end is only the beginning. Anyway, let's get started. Started. Yeah, let's go. The beginning of the end of the class trial. Everyone gather once again at you know where. See you in a bit, Monica. <laughs> okay, so it's finally time for the class trial. It's about to begin again. The class trial is going to start. The final class trial. Last time, all our lives will be on the line. The last time hope and despair are on the line. I don't have a choice. I have to do this. Okay then. This is the end. Okay, and I'm going to save the class trial for the next episode where we will finally finish up this game and also see what will, what will happen in the last class trial. Will hope win or will despair? Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a like. Also, be sure to like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter, as well as support my Patreon. All three links will be in the description below. And subscribe for more. And if you are subscribed or a new subscriber right now, be sure to hit that bell icon to get notified when I upload videos. This is Viola Rules, signing off. Talk to you later.